Welcome back to episode 12 of Drop the Mitts Hockey Podcast, brought to you in partnership with Primetime Productions. We are joined by a very gifted hockey player, um, you know, one, one of the best of his age groups, um, an unbelievably um, talented kid, Gavin McKenna. Gavin, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. We... Uh, <laughs> So honestly, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about how you how's the off season been going? Um, how often you've been on the ice, and uh, what other kind of things do you enjoy dur- to do during the off season? Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a good summer for sure. I've been uh, I was out in Michigan training there at the development program for a bit, and then uh, in Kelowna in Vancouver, I was kind of all over the place skating. Probably some some weeks it would be like seven times a week some weeks it'd be just like four or three and then training five times a week usually um and then you know we uh just kind of got back into the season here i'm at back in medicine hat where i'm playing for the year and uh we've uh, just finished camp and getting into preseason now and then yeah stuff i like to do in summer is just um be with my family obviously and then i like to fish uh I like to golf dirt bike uh Lots of outdoor stuff for sure. How's your golf game, dude? It's got better this summer. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's like unreal, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. Yeah, we won't ask for a handicap number. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll keep that between us. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Honestly, I-, I wanted to talk to you about growing up in uh, in Whitehorse. Um, obviously, being the capital of Yukon. Um, how young were you when you you know got into hockey? Um, you know, I, I read that your your dad would build, you know, rinks in the backyard. Uh, when when did you fall in love with the game of hockey? Yeah, well, pretty much my whole family uh, played hockey, so I was surrounded by it my uh, whole life growing up. But I think I started to skate when I was two. Uh, like, my grandpa, um, my parents and stuff would be at work, uh, or my sisters would be at school. And my grandpa would take me out to, like, the public rink where I'd just – spend hours out on there and then you know my dad kind of realized that I loved the game so he started to build me a backyard rink uh so spent pretty much my whole childhood out there which probably helped me quite a bit so um, yeah yeah that's crazy I couldn't even walk at two years old you're skating <laughs> <laughs> you're still learning to, you're still I was learning gonna to walk say, dude, yeah, one foot in front of the other yeah <laughs> yeah so are there any um so obviously you know you're you're playing at a super high level right now um super gifted player are there any players that you kind of idolize um or or try to emulate your game after um and then are there any players that you know that are in the league I guess now that are like good mentors to you um I'd say uh for me probably Jack Hughes um he's a really exciting player to watch um i've uh i've been lucky enough to train at the same gym as him so kind of get to see what he's doing every day and stuff um and yeah it's just the way he plays is just so like modern i guess and it's like he's such a good skater so um try to just do what he does and yeah watch him all the time and stuff he's a he's an unbelievable player yeah. Yeah, man. What, like, what would you say? Obviously, because you're still developing your game, but what what's your play style? How would you describe it? Uh, I'd say I'm definitely a playmaker. Um, you know, like I like to be with line mates who can usually shoot the puck. I guess because you know when I set them up, it's I like you know get an apple there or whatever. And then, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm a pretty fat, good skater. Um, and then I say I have a decent shot too. I can score sometimes, but I'd say my main thing is uh, definitely playmaking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, Mikey. Yeah, he li- he listed all those things. Obviously, we li- we had to look li- look you up on Elite Prospects. Um, you know, listed at, you're an elite passer, team player, extremely accurate shooter. Um, what are some areas of your game that you're you know looking to improve? Um, you know, that some areas that you've been looking to work, um, you know, fix up this off season. Uh, one thing that I uh, kind of got from last season was uh, probably my shot. Um, I think I'd like to 
kind of a shooter's mentality a bit more next year or this year, I guess. But yeah, just work on that. Obviously the goalies have gotten a lot better over the years and bigger and stuff. And then just my physical game, like I'm not like the biggest of guys. Um, so going into the dub, like playing against like 20 year olds now, um, you know, they'll obviously be bigger and stronger and stuff. So just being heavier, that would help a lot for sure. Yeah, dude. Um, so you, you're going into your second season in Medicine Hat. Uh, you played 16 games last year. Do you have any major goals in your mind for this upcoming season that you want to try to reach? Um, you know, I think we got a, we got a really good team, uh, that, uh, we'll, we'll have here this year and the upcoming year. So a goal for me is obviously win a championship, um, whether it be this year, next year, the year after, um, and then this year, I'm just focused on obviously taking it uh, game by game. And then uh, I'd say the main main goal for for personal is win rookie of the year. Um, you know, that's a good goal. <laughs> yeah, just to just to push for that. Well on your way, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. <laughs> yeah, dude. So you know, I'm I'm gonna take you back a little bit. Um, your days in the CS uh, CSSHL. Um, obviously, 2021 most assists. You had 42. Most points with 65. Um, and then last season, 2022, you had the most assists, 38. Most goals, 37. Most points, 75. And then you were voted as the uh, most valuable player. Um, absolutely dominated this league. Um, what exactly went right for you? Um, and, you know, what were some of the things that, that you really took from that year um, that you're going to take to this year? um well i was just putting putting areas to succeed you know like being in medicine hat last year i was right with the tigers so i had uh practices with the tigers and stuff which obviously helped improve my game i'd say and then i got to play with saha um and then just you know being with good line mates and stuff like i was on good teams both years um really successful teams like lots of guys are going to be playing junior this year on the, both of those teams. Um, so, you know, I got to give lots of credit to my line mates and just the play, the uh, positions I was put in, like getting power play and stuff, all of that. So, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Um, just like kind of out of curiosity, what, do you have a favorite hockey moment that sticks out to you? Maybe one thing a little bit above the other on the ice or off the ice? Um, Man, there's a ton, but first one that came to mind was probably scoring my first WHL goal, um, you know, against Regina. It was a sold-out building, um, and then my parents were in the building, so it was definitely definitely a cool feeling for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, dude, so you, you mentioned Regina. Um, obviously, you know, your cousins with Connor uh, Bedard, and um, – you know, being being cousins with him, obviously he was the you know number one pick this year, um, very highly touted. You know, along with yourself, um, is is there any advice that he gave you? Um, you know, you know what to expect at the next level, and exactly like how to have success at the next level. Um, it wasn't like he wouldn't give me tips, but he just like come for me, like he just kind of tell me like. Um, just don't really worry about the pressure and stuff, I guess. And then, you know, we've only, yeah. it's like a distant, like cousin relationship, I guess. Um, yeah. so, you know, we've only talked a couple times, like through text and we obviously talked after the game, like he's just such a genuine guy. Like, um, he congratulates me after all my success and then I congratulate him after all his. Um, so yeah, he's just a really genuine guy and a great guy for sure. Yeah. So I I want to go back to um, you being selected number one overall to, uh, you know, in the WHL draft. What was that like hearing your name? Obviously, you know, you're the number one pick in the WHL uh, Bantam draft to uh, Medicine Hat. Talk to us about that day and um, what what was that feeling like hearing your name, you know, you know, number one overall? I mean, that's huge, dude. Yeah, it was pretty cool for sure. Um, my phone was blowing up quite a bit. I uh, hadn't really experienced anything like that before. Um, and then 
just being from Whitehorse, like I got so much support because uh, it was the first time anybody from Whitehorse has been selected that high. Um, so just getting all the support from back home was unreal. Um, and just, yeah, having a, I was at the rink when I got drafted. So being with my team and stuff there, that was, that was a really cool experience. Um, yeah. It's something I'll remember forever. Yeah, man. So you said, you know, you like to emulate your game after Jack Hughes, but did you have a favorite team maybe growing up that you just, you know, like to watch you sat on the couch, and, you know, saw how they played, took some tips from them, like favorite team growing up. Yeah. My favorite team to this day still is, uh, Chicago. I, uh, nice. I loved Patty Kane growing up, uh, still do. Um, and then, yeah, now we got we got Bezzy, so yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty sick. It all worked out. Yeah, dude, everything everything comes full circle. That's so crazy, <laughs> yeah. uh, man. I I have a feeling, honestly, I have a feeling they're going to be turning around pretty quick. And I mean, who knows, yeah. man? By by the time twenty twenty six rolls around, like maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we're talking Gavin McKenna in a uh, uniform too. So yeah, that'd be unreal. <laughs> um. You know, obviously, like I mentioned, you're you know you're not draft eligible till 2026. Um, but you know, tr- talking to say, say we're talking to like GMs or coaches in the league, um, what kind of person um, off the ice and what kind of player, um, you know, can these executives expect to get from uh, a, a guy like Gavin McKenna? Yeah, I think off ice, I'm a pretty pretty energetic guy. Um, I like to talk quite a bit. Um, and obviously I like to work hard. Um, I'm a guy who likes to push himself, whether in the gym or on the ice and like to, uh, push my teammates as well. So I think, you know, that's what they'll expect from me. And then on the ice, just like I said, a hardworking playmaker, um, you know, try to make the guys around him better and make himself better too. Yeah, man. With like, so the NHL kind of getting away from its traditional physicality, fighting, just brutality aspects, and transitioning more towards skill and speed. Uh, do you think that benefits you as a player? Yeah, it definitely could for sure. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not I'm not the thickest of guys, so you know, <laughs> I like to. I'm a pretty skilled guy, I guess. So you know, I like. I kind of like that, how it's changing a little bit. Yeah. You know, some people aren't uh, too keen on that, but uh, I'm a big fan of it for sure. Yeah. Definitely but, makes but it more not... entertaining. You get to see yeah, more, but... more like individual skills. Yeah. I was going to say, but you're not afraid to drop them every so often, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. Man. <laughs> <Chocolate>. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, honestly, like, I, I know you're – obviously, you're you're so young and, you know, your career is just starting. Um and you know th- there's so much hype and everything and obviously you've you've definitely proven that you're you can play at every level um how do you not let that pressure kind of get to you and how do you just you know at the end of the day you know i think a lot of people forget that you are still just a kid um and you know you, you there's still a lot of things you enjoy doing outside of hockey how do you not let that pressure kind of get to you um and you know, like, again, you mentioned, you know, Connor kind of giving you a little bit of mentorship of how to not let that pressure get to you. But, you know, what kind of what kind of things do you do to, you know, not let that pressure get to you? Um. Well, honestly, uh, you know, just being in the rink, that's where I like feel the most like at home. Um, you know, I just um, when I'm on the ice, just it kind of just goes away you know like you just kind of play your game but you know if you're off that game i just do my best not to get frustrated and then you know like i'm lucky enough where i got resources to talk to about my game like if it wasn't a good game or whatever um so you know it's always good to go to those people and then you know it's it's always good sometimes like in the summer just to take a couple weeks away from the game after such a long year um kind of do the things that you love that you don't usually get to do during the season. So I think that helps a lot for sure. And then just, you know, obviously just loving the game, like having fun with it. Uh, You know, I think if you're doing that, you're going to be successful. So I do my best to just have fun with it. Yeah. You you know, you mentioned just, just keep loving the game and just, you know, enjoying yourself out there, man. I I was watching the clip of, 
you know, you score in your first WHL goal and you can just tell, dude, like at the celebration, like you you can just tell how passionate you are about the game. And that's unbelievable, man. Uh, it, it's so good to see just, you know, the young younger kids just so passionate about the game and so excited, you know, to get out there. Um, yeah. Definitely just, you know, keep loving the game, dude. Like that's, that's one thing I can just say, just – Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can just tell the way you play out there, you know, you're just so passionate about the game and, and don't ever lose that. Um, yeah, sure. I, Mikey, I don't know if, if there's any uh, other questions that you have. Um, I got nothing else, man. I just, again, thank you for coming on, man. It's huge. Um, it's awesome to see you thrive, you know, in the WHL and, and um, I can't wait to see what you do this year with medicine hat. We'll be yeah, watching. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, dude, we're so we were so excited about this interview. Um, so honestly, we can't thank you enough for uh, coming on Drop the Mitts, and uh, honestly, wish you nothing but the best this season, buddy. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, man, take care. All right, you too. Take care, bud. Yeah.